Oh, you guys, I didn't know this was going to feel so awkward to talk about. <laughs> I could come to my studio and paint. And for a moment, that would take away the fear and the grief and the pain. And I'm oh, so grateful for that. So deeply grateful just to have a few moments, minutes, half an hour in the day where I didn't have to think about fucking cancer and I could just create from my heart and just be me. practice looks like now because a lot's changed in the past two years I've changed I'm still me I think though that I might be more me than I ever was before I suppose that's because after you've had cancer you just haven't got time or the energy to be anything other than completely who you are I had gone in for a routine breast ex uh, mammogram examination and I I didn't think there was going to be any issues. I thought I'd be in and out super quick and that wasn't the case. They found a tumour, they diagnosed me with breast cancer and they immediately scheduled me for a mastectomy. I ended up having a double mastectomy, that was my choice. Perhaps we will discuss that in another video. And I had six months of chemo and a whole bunch of radiation. It was full on. It was so full on. I don't mean to gloss over it quickly. I don't mean to trivialize it by smiling while I'm talking to you. It's not funny. It wasn't fucking fun at all. It was awful. Do you know what? This is hard to talk about. I didn't think it was going to be that hard to talk about, but... I'm finding it quite emotional, which is okay. It's okay to be emotional about this stuff. It's fucking cancer, you know? Oh, you guys, I didn't know this was going to feel so awkward to talk about. <laughs> but the reason that I'm talking about it is because, well, A, some of you out there are also survivors because that's just the way it is, right? There are many of us. This story is not mine. This story goes far and wide. And B, I'm telling you this because it has deeply changed my creative practice. Mostly because when I was going through cancer treatment, I realized that I had my creative practice to hold me, to lean into. I could come to my studio and paint. And for a moment that would take away the fear and the grief and the pain. And I was so grateful for that. So deeply grateful just to have a few moments, minutes, half an hour in the day where I didn't have to think about fucking cancer and I could just create from my heart and just be me. I decided to gift myself the space, the year. In fact, it's still going on, so we're in two years now, but I gifted myself this space where I would stop judging myself. 
I would stop telling myself what I had to paint because it had to be a series and it all had to um, be a collection. I learned to let go. I learned to give myself creative freedom, to make a mess, to make stuff that I didn't love and be really okay with that. She painted in this uh, Moleskine watercolor album, it's called. It's an A4. Um, at, in landscape and like I really enjoyed this book I really really enjoyed it and I also have this journal which is my Leuchtturm 1917 um, blank journal and I wrote with a little bit of little bit of painting with a fountain pen and and, and a little bit of illustrating but but mainly words and sometimes just phrases and snaps of sentences that would come into my head so what does my practice actually look like now? Well, I am doing a lot of work in um, on paper, in sketchbooks, and on canvas. So I have a couple of journals that I'm working in now. One is this Jane Davenport large canvas journal. I first bought one of Jane's uh, journals, mixed media journals, uh, quite a few years ago, and I've I've really i really love them and i've always had one since i tend to just buy one every year this was from a trip to the markets um at the fruit and veg markets in cairns so i took photos and brought them back to the studio and then made this collage which i bloody love oh my god there we go i love it it is just so cool and see that's part of my practice it's to go out take photos, get inspiration and bring it back to the studio and work with those pictures and work with the sketches that I've made. I think it's awesome to go and explore. Everything can't be done in the studio. I don't want to do everything by searching things on the internet. I want to get out there. I want to see things with my eyes, sketch them with my eyes and take photos and bring that back and work with it and see what I can do with it. That's part of my practice and something that I'll be talking to you more about in later videos. I have this sketchbook here as well and this is my landscape sketchbook. It's got some me expo. Landscape is not something that I have done very much but it is something that I adore and want to practice and and just really enjoy doing. So I got this book. This is it's a great book. It's a Sea Whites of Brighton, I believe. In order to keep developing my illustration technique and the craft of illustration and storytelling in that way, I usually set some projects for myself, things that I want to, that I'm curious about and want to look into and draw. One of those was this mini project that I did on indigo. So I explored the like the history of indigo and how it was used in indigenous cultures and then how that was then used in Genoa in the 1600s to turn into the first pair of jeans. And so like, yeah, I do little things like this to try and practice my craft of illustration. Here's another one. This is me. <laughs> um, there's, I've moved to the country, right? You can, you can see the hills out there and it is glorious and I love it. And my neighbors have roosters and every morning I hear the roosters and you know, it brings me such joy. And I like, is there any other creature that greets the day the way the rooster does? You know, it's just beautiful. So I, I got a bit obsessed with roosters as well and wanted to develop my drawings of them. And uh, so I, whoop, so here, I'm, I'm testing out all the different colors, different techniques, different things. And then I came up with this. And then I thought that's really fucking cool and I would like that on a tea towel. So then, bear with me, I started designing it into this kind of tea towel that says morning, cause I think it's backwards for you right now, I'm not sure. Um, yeah, so that's how I go. I start moving, uh, heading, to, my curiosity takes me towards the things that I'm really interested in or that really excite me in my daily life. And then I start developing and having and, and trying out different ways of drawing and expressing how I feel about those things.
This is the inside of the living area of the Apple Shed. I don't show this space too much or I haven't shown it much yet because it's the space where my family and I live. So it's our personal, it's our safe space. But there is a beautiful window here now that I sit and look at the hills around me and meditate and breathe and just feel very, very grateful to be here as I soak up the sunshine and warmth that comes through this window. I want to say that the biggest change in my creative practice in the last couple of years is the way that I meet myself. It's the way I feel about the work that I do, not necessarily the work that I do or what paper I use, what book I use or what art supply that I use. I used to wake in the morning and think about how I could be the most productive and almost play catch up every day with this ginormous to-do list of things to do and how I could somehow make the best work that I could in the time that I had. And I still love those things and I still care about those things, but they are not my first intention. That is not the most important thing, how to be productive. The most important thing is how do I feel? How do I feel about myself? I wake in the morning and the first thing that I think is, how do I hold myself today? How can I sit in peace and in silence and listen in so that I can acknowledge the pockets of grief that are inside me and the sadness and also the immense gratitude and the joy? That's the first thing. That is my first intention with every day and throughout the day. And I think that has changed my work significantly because it makes me kind, makes me so much kinder to myself than I ever was before. I don't look at the work that I do and think, oh, I wish it was this and oh, I wish it was better. I simply just love it. I just, I respect my process so much more because I respect who I am because I am so fucking happy to be alive. That makes a huge difference. It makes all the difference. It makes all the difference to not only the work that I do, but the way that I meet the world. It's the energetics. I have realized that my creative practice is 90% energetics, i.e., how I feel about myself and how I am taking care of myself. And 10% the work, the creative work, if that makes sense. All right, my loves, it is time for me to go. We are taking my beautiful 11 year old to the theater tonight for her birthday. I would just like to say though that yes, I've been through a lot, but now I am well and I am here in this amazing place. Tasmania is incredible. It is filling my soul. It is filling my cup with inspiration. Everywhere I go, I want to stop and sketch and paint and photograph and bring it back to the studio and share it with you. I am so inspired. I'm fucking so excited about it. And, you know, life is good. Life is so good. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If any of this resonates with you, then please let me know in the comments. And if there are any videos that you would like me to make, let me know in the comments. I hope you enjoyed it. And um, if you did, give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And I will see you in the next video. Mwah. Bye.